Okay, seventh graders, you get to work on finding some square roots and cube roots for us. We're going to give you some really crazy numbers, and this is a square that I really wouldn't want to build. The idea is if I had a square, I could use these models, these squares, to try to build a square that's made out of 625 total squares or smaller squares or square units but that would take an awful long time. So there must be another way to think of this and try to figure out both the length and the width of this square. So to do that, I want you to try a factor tree. We wanna think of what I could divide into 625. Well, I'm thinking here, I'm thinking about money. I know I could use quarters. 25 times something will get me $6.25, for instance. So I could say it would take four of these to make 100. I want 600. So 4 times 6 would be 24 of them. 24. And an extra 25 cents? Oh, looks like 25 times 25 might work. Okay, 25 times 25. I was so not trying to give you an answer to start with. Um, that's kind of a bummer. Um, let me try this a different way. <laughs> Let's pretend I hadn't thought of that. The square root of 625 equals what? Meaning, what is its length? What is its height? or what is its base, or what is its width. So let's try to break this down differently in something a little less obvious. So I see it ends in five, let's divide by five. Well, five goes into 625, let me think. 625 is the same as 500 plus 125 more. Five goes into 500 100 times. Five goes into 125, let's see here, 25 times if I combine those. All right, I've got 125. Well, five is prime, so I'll circle it, and 125 can be broken down a little bit farther, right? So five goes in there again. Uh, five goes into this how many times? I just did that over here a minute ago with my partial sums, right? So I could say five times 25, or five quarters would get me 125. Five is prime, I'll circle it. 25 can be broken down again. Well, that means five times five, right? And both of those numbers are prime, meaning only one times five will get me this factor of five. This multiple, right? One times five are the factors. Here we go. Uh, I am done with this tree, meaning there are no branches that are unfinished and I have only primes when I'm done with each branch. So when I'm talking about a square, I'm really talking about knowing its area. Its area is 625. What I wanna find is the length of its base or its height. To do that, I really need two groups. I need a base group and a height group. So I'm just gonna kinda try this like a T-chart. Well, on a square, aren't both the base and the height the same? So shouldn't these have the same amounts in them? Go back to your tree, take a look at your primes, and decide what could I give to each group? Well, each group could have a five. We'll take those off the tree. Oh, there are two more fives, so each group gets another five. Because this came from a factorization, we're using the rule of multiplication. That means I could use five times five to find its base or to find its height. Well, let's clean this up a little bit. Can I simplify? Five times five is 25. And over here, five times five for the height is still 25. Interesting, what you just found for me is that the base must be 25 and the height must be 25. And I really could test that out. Although quite by accident, I did that earlier, didn't I? 25 times 25 will work. So we would clean this up a little bit and say the square root of 625. So we keep the 625 in the radicals showing we're finding its square root or the length of its base or the length of its height or the number that when squared will get me an area of 625. And I could write here 25. Please be careful, sixth graders. I know when you're working on seventh grade math, it's really tempting to write maybe 25 times 25, to write it twice, but we're really trying to say what would be in one of these groups, what would be in the base group, or what would be in the height group. We really want the number that I would have to square up to get there. Next up, cube roots. Well, that's really saying how many cubes would make up an object. So if I were to visualize that first, I could start first with my model. And it has to be three-dimensional because we're talking about cubes. Those are three-dimensional, right? Well, 4,096 goes on the inside because that's the total number of cubes it would take. Here I have some cubes, but there's no way I want you to count out 4,096 of them to figure out what kind of cube it's going to make or how long its base height 
or uh, length would be. So with that, we're going to need a different strategy. How will I find its length, width, and height? Well, to do that, we can go back to this idea of a tree. And I really like the idea that these are called roots, and all good trees probably have roots. So we're going to break this down somehow. Uh, I'm not going to worry about this index out front. All this index is really telling me is that I'm finding a cube root. I need to split it not into two groups, but into three for a base, a width, and a height. Okay, Because we're talking about volume equals length times width times height. All right, I see that these are even, so two goes in here. Let's see, two goes into four twice. I don't need to worry about that zero in the hundreds place. Two goes into nine four times with one left over. So this would be 16 left. Two goes into 16 eight times. Two is prime, I'll circle it, and this can be broken down again. Looks like it's still even. So what's half of 2,000? 1,000. What's half of 48? 24. Just thinking some mental math here as we go. Two is still prime, I circle it. Yeah, even again. Half of 1,000 is 500, and half of 24 is 12. Let's keep going. Still even, might as well keep going with twos. I need to get some prime numbers on my tree anyway. So half of 500 is 250, and half of 12 is six. 256 it looks like. Still even, here we go again. Two goes into 200 all once, and two goes into 50 25 times. So two goes into six three times. 125 plus three. Looks like 128 to me. Oh, still even. Let's keep going. Oh, you know what? I see something faster. Let's try four. Four goes into 12 three times. Four goes into eight twice. Four times 32 should work. Oh, neither of those are prime. I have to break them both down. They're both composite. Four is the same as two times two. Guess what? Found some primes. And 32 is the same as, how about four times eight? Well, those are both composite. Keep on going. Uh, we're getting there. And 8 is the same as 2 times 4, which really could be broken down into 2 times 2 again. Wow, this is an awful lot of factors on a factor tree. Next, I know I'm trying to find cube root. So I go back and I try to focus myself on, I need a length, a width, a height. I actually need three groups. You could call it thing 1, thing 2, thing 3, but I usually call it the length group. The width group and the height group. And remember, because we're talking about a perfect cube, we really want it to have squares on each surface, squares on the facing sides. So for that reason, I want to make sure they get all an equal number of factors. Well, let's see. Take off three of these twos. One, two, three. And we can give a two to each group. I see three more twos. Give another two to each group. Three more twos. I get a third two and then the lights go out because you're not moving around enough in your video next up i see three more two two and two remember these are factorization trees so i want to use some multiplication so i'm going to show multiplication between each of these not great because i kind of ran out of space here but i think we'll get the idea now i'd say be very cautious when you multiply you don't want to say two four six eight that would be a wrong answer so i could say two times two is four and 2 times 2 again is 4. Well, 4 times 4 is 16. Let's try it again. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Well, 4 times 4 is still 16. And again, you're hoping to get the same darn answer from each of these. So would the height work out as well? Yep, there seem to be 1, 2, 3, 4 factors of 2 being multiplied. I should get 16. You just found me the length, the width, the height of a cube that has a volume of 4,000 96 units cubed. So make sure you show me this index here, meaning I found a cube root, not just a square root, a cube root. I split it into three equal groups. And what did we find in each group? We found 16. That really would be the answer to the length, the width, or the height of this figure. If I wanted to label this, this would really be units. It's a linear length. I was just finding a length or width or height. Again, when looking at square roots and cube roots, you want to build trees. You want to start there with some trees and you want to break them into groups. With square roots, I'm thinking two dimensions. I break them into two groups, a base and a height. With cube roots, I need to talk three dimensions, length, width, and height. 
So here, three groups. I want to show you real quickly how to do that on a calculator. So I hope this shows up on here. I'm not sure if it will or won't. Looks like that might work. So to find the square root of 625, there's a square root symbol. It's sitting right here. It's sitting right underneath the x to the second power. To get that, you notice it's in blue or purple or whatever color you want to call this periwinkle. So what I would do is I would choose the second power and choose that button. And inside I would give you 625 as my area that I need to break up. When I press equals, you get an answer of 25. And that's actually the answer we found here. There's another way to check this out when you're done. So if I really want to square 25, I could just press this x squared button. It's going to take your answer. You can't see that very well. Your answer and square it and see what you get. 625. It does check out. I want to show you how to check with a calculator for cube root. So cube root's a little bit special. Remember it has this index out front of 3. We can do that on here as well. But you're going to have to use this special button right above the insert. So I'll try to show that to you here. A special button above the insert. It kind of looks like a radical symbol, but it has that index of, well, it has an X out front. We're going to use that somehow. So what index do I want to use? Well, I'm finding a cube root, so I'm talking about three groups. I'm talking about a length, a width, a height. Next, I need to get that periwinkle sign. So I'm going to push the second button and choose this insert button. I don't know if you can see what's happening here. So I have three uh, as my index, and it shows up as x right in front of the radical. Well next, what number did I give you a minute ago? 4096, so we type that in. That's the volume that we're trying to break into, three equal groups. And we'll press equals. Hey, indeed we found 16. 16 is the cube root of 4096. How would I check to see if that builds up the same way? Meaning if I take 16 to the third power, can I get there again? Can I double check my answers right? Well, why don't we clear this out for a minute? I would take the 16 that I found as my answer and I want to raise it to what power? The third. So you use this insert button right here. We press this and we use three as our exponent. It doesn't really look like an exponent, but that insert button is telling you it is. It makes it that superscript like an exponent would be. And we press equals. Wow, took us right back to our original volume. It checks out. Again, square roots, cube roots. We need to know how to do them longhand, especially when you move on to eighth grade math. And we need to remember how many groups belong to each. And hopefully, a quick review of the calculator will help you do some double checking.